Every year, dozens of sea turtles wash up on the beaches of Long Island, and one special organization has made it their mission to make sure the sea turtles survive. Today, we're at the New York Marine Rescue Center in Riverhead. We are the response, rescue, and rehab for all marine mammals and sea turtles throughout Long Island, New York, up the Hudson River. Maxine Montello plays a very big role in a lot of little lives. A lot of people are very surprised to hear that sea turtles utilize our waters here, but Long Island Sound is a huge foraging area, Great Peconic Bay, Great South Bay, all these areas are known habitats. Four species of sea turtles can be found in the sound, Atlantic Green, Kemp's Ridley, Loggerhead, and even one of the planet's largest, the Leatherback. They are here, they're here all summer. Uh, unfortunately, we see them strand during the winter because of cold stunning. Cold stunning is a phenomenon similar to hypothermia that happens to sea turtles when they are exposed to very cold water for an extended period of time, causing their bodies to slowly shut down. These turtles are not swimming on their own. They're almost listless at the surface, so it's that strong wind that will bring them to shore. And so we have them strand on north-facing beaches all along the Long Island Sound. We also have them on the South Fork on north-facing beaches. How much does climate change impact the cold stun season? We do know that sea surface temperatures are continuing to increase which is causing animals to stay here longer. We're going right from summer almost straight into winter, where they're not able to even have that kind of cue to migrate out sooner, causing more turtles to strand in the area. How many turtles do you have in-house right now? We have 41 turtles, um, alive turtles in-house, 27 turtles that we took in from our partners at New England Aquarium. We're able to use these big old seal tanks to hold a 50 pound plus turtle. And then we also have the rest are our New York sea turtles that have stranded. This is our treatment room here. Um, all our animals are brought in through this door. We're actually able to get this room as cold as possible because it's really crucial to not warm these turtles up uh, too fast. We do a full physical on the animal. Um, we get that internal temperature. We look for heart rate on them. Some of these turtles come in with a heart rate of one beat per minute. We actually do little touches. We move their front flippers and if they have any kind of cue to that, um, we know that they're still alive. We get a blood sample, to see what's going on internally, and then we get them swimming. You know, naturally they want to be in the water, and we find that that actually helps stimulate them breathing. These are our, some of our sea turtle holding tanks. Uh, we put our smallest turtles here. Uh, in this tank, we have 11 Kemp's Ridleys uh, that are actually the most critically endangered species and actually represent more than 50% of the turtles that strand here in New York. So it's really crucial for us to be able to save these guys and give them a second chance. Tell me about the turtle in here that you recently got that was injured. Yeah, Is so that I, it, 21? Yeah, 21 right here uh, was our first turtle of the season. It stranded on November 4th. Um, and this guy probably stranded really early because he had suffered a vessel interaction. However, he was hit, it removed the top beak. These guys are benthic eaters, and so they use that beak to crush crabs. It also broke his front flipper in two spots. It's been a long road, and we just got him to eat, which is a huge you know, effort on our team. And as you can see, he's swimming pretty well and eating on his own. That's you know, a great sign of good things to come. Of course, because he's in a tank, it's adorable yeah. watching him swim with one flipper. Let's take a look at this turtle. So this is a loggerhead sea turtle. This is more of a sub-adult, so probably closer to maybe 10 years old. These guys will reach to about 300 pounds when they're full grown. How long does a turtle typically stay in the facility? Um, about six to nine months. Some of them we can release sooner down to Florida. We don't want to keep turtles in rehab for no reason. You know, if they're healthy, they need to be back in the wild. Maxine and her team attach satellite tracking devices to some of the turtles before releasing them. They show us that after rehab, they can still kind of exhibit that natural post rehab movement patterns. All the turtles that we released this year actually were able to migrate to warmer waters before the cold sun season. We're tracking those maps all the time. We have them live on our uh, website so people can see where they are. Then about halfway through our interview, the phone rang. So we just got a call on our hotline for a sea turtle that stranded just now on the beach at Bailey's Beach. So the patron just called our 24 hour hotline. Um, so Jill's on the phone with them right now getting the information. This is not staged. They really just <laughs> did get this call and it's very cool that we're gonna get to go out and see how they do it. Moments later, we were on the road, closely following stranding technician Jill Pryor out to Mattituck to respond to a stranded loggerhead. And after an adrenaline-fueled hike down the beach, there it was. So 
we're getting his temp at around 8.6. Their normal temperature is around 23 to 25, so definitely cold stunned. And he was along the high tide line, so brought up with the tides. We're not getting any responses from this guy, but we'll get him back and see if we can find any responses out there. Despite the loggerhead's lack of response, Maxine will begin the warming process to give the animal a chance before any final calls are made. After an eventful afternoon, one more stop. So we call this our rescue center. It's a, a donation from the aquarium that allows us to be in their actual building. We're able to say hello and share our mission, show our sea turtles. Now, we've been talking about how you have a small staff and how much you rely on volunteers. And I have been lucky enough to be a volunteer this season uh, with the Cold Sun Patrol. I'm walking the beach in the cold, of course, looking for sea turtles. I think I've done at least two miles so far. Yeah, so people can sign up just like you did um, and join our citizen science patrolling efforts. How else can we help? It's really just the community donating to our program that keeps us standing. So any little thing really just keeps our program growing. Maxine, this has been such an incredible day to kind of just see this all up close and personal. So thank you and keep up the great work.